Matt, thanks. And tonight we have a panel of Eastern Iowa voters in the studio, and the idea is to give you a glimpse of what voters are thinking about in this important election. And Rob Humble, with you, I want to start with you on the end. With this Senate race between Bruce Braley and Joni Ernst, what is the one issue that stands out for you? As a young person, uh, education is extremely important to me. Uh, I've been the direct benefit of federal student loans. State Senator Ernst uh, seeks to eliminate federal student loans, while Braley seeks to uh, lower the interest rate on federal student loans and ex uh, expand Pell Grants. So the choice was very clear. I had to back Bruce Braley. Okay. Uh, Anthony Arrington, I'd like to go to you. What is it, the one issue that stands out for you here? Um, uh, being an employer in the city and uh, in the county, I think jobs are very, mo very important to me. Um, I see a lot of uh, issues with employment. Um, obviously, unemployment rate's really low right now here in Lincoln County, um, but uh, that's very important to me. Either one of the candidates standing out for you at this point? I'll hold my vote. You're going to hold your vote. Yeah, okay. I'll and we're going to be coming back to our panel of voters throughout the evening to give you perspective on all the races. Tiffany? These are races where we don't really expect any surprises, panel. The race for governor as well as the Loebsack miller meeks race. I'm going to start with you, Maricel. Do you think that this represents a sort of mandate for the status quo? I really don't. I think, unfortunately, what has happened throughout our nation is there seems to be some sort of uh, everybody complains about who's representing them, but nobody wants to vote them out. Yeah, it's kind of like we're not happy, but not my guy. But not my guy. My guy's okay. So everybody just gets revoted. And the only time you ever see a turnover is when, for example, Senator Harkin vacates the seat. Um, so it, Interesting. It's, I, don't, I don't believe it's a mandate. Okay. Landis? Um, I would agree with Maricel on that. I think that uh, in both of those races, you've kind of seen a failure on the part of the challenging candidate to come in and say what they would do different. It's more of a um, everything that we don't like about the incumbent, but what exactly are you going to bring to the bring to the table that's going to be something something that is going to really enact change and and make us change the course of the ship? Interesting. All right. Thanks, guys, for your perspective, Scott. We are back at CBS 2 News with our Voice of the Voter panel, and we have time for one last quick thought going into tonight. Panel, start. Rob, you go first. I'm excited to see how the races turn out tonight and see what that means for the next few years in terms of policy. Uh, we could see a big shakeup in where things are headed. Ann? I'm looking to see if it becomes a throw the bums out election that people are dissatisfied with the current administration and uh, Congress and uh, go to the, bo the ballot and voice their opinion by, th it's their chance to do, uh, institute term limits. Yeah, Anthony. So a couple of things, looking to see if there's going to be a landslide. You know, we, we keep hearing about the, mm -hmm. it's going to be a Republican landslide. We're going to see if that's true. And the, the other thing is I'm looking uh, for voter turnout statistics. I'm interested, um, this seems to be one of the most popular midterm elections I've known of since in my adult life, so Feels I'll like be interested to see what the, the demographics look like when we're done. Landis and Maricel, super quick. I'd be curious to see how much the big national conversation filters down into these local elections. I would just really like to see that uh, the voters actually get out and, and get educated and don't just vote for the party line and right. the status quo. And you have till 9 o'clock tonight, All important right. to note. Thank you, folks. And a final word from Terry now. Wow, pretty exciting night, and I'm joined by a lot of folks who consider tonight a really exciting night, midterm elections. This is our uh, Voice of the Voters panel joining us tonight, just neighbors and friends of ours here at CBS2 uh, from different persuasions here, coming from different perspectives, here to give us your thoughts on tonight's election results so far. Uh, Rob, I know you had some thoughts on the congressional races so far. I, I have a concern uh, with uh, the race in the 1st District and then over in the western part of the state in the 4th District. You have two uh, conservative candidates here who are still openly denying human-caused climate change, and they don't want to do anything to combat it. Uh, they both uh, support increased drilling, if that's an opportunity, whether it be fracking in North Dakota or the Keystone Pipeline. And I just have a lot of concern of what that could mean for uh, climate change agenda legislation okay, if they are reelected. Okay, let's keep our focus tonight on the election results as they're coming in. Anybody takeaways so far? We're looking at absentee absentees coming in, and Anne, it looks as though right now absentees are favoring Braley. Yeah, that's kind of a, a surprising to me. Um, to the extent that the numbers hold out, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't bode well for Joni. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to wait and see. How it plays out? Are you seeing? Yeah. Do you guys are you guys feeling a mandate here? Is this is really an election for these candidates, or is it a is it a um, an outburst against the president? 
Yeah, I'm feeling that it's uh, very much a mandate against uh, the current policies that are being put in place. And, you know, I just got done uh, leaving the polls and I saw an overwhelming Republican uh, show up at the polls. All right. Uh, well, probably eight to one. Okay, those numbers still coming in, guys. And again, to our viewers out there, a reminder, the numbers are at the bottom of your screen all night long. Scott? We are surrounded by interested voters here in the CBS2 studios right now with our Voice of the Voters panel. And we're going to go to them right now, if we could, just to get their perspective on some of those early, uh, early races coming in, those numbers coming in. They're all following on their phones. Landis Wiley there, second there on the end. Your thoughts as we head into this? Well, I, you know, I don't think at this point we've seen a whole lot that's come through that's been surprising to most people. Um, I think it's interesting looking around the country at some of the results coming in. Some of these parts, some of these races that have a third party candidate or a libertarian candidate, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they peel votes, votes off of the major parties um, and how that may, may tip the balance. And, and I think that's a trend maybe if you talk about uh, is this a referendum on current policies? That may be a statement not just about Democrat versus Republican, but are people just getting frustrated with the overall tone in Washington, and are we going to see a rise of third-party candidates? Uh, your thoughts, Anthony Arrington. I mean, you know, we're seeing some close races in, in, in some of these contests. Yeah, we, we were just talking, sitting there looking at our smartphones, looking at Virginia and then the Libertarians and, and the fact that about 60,000 or so people voted so I, I thought that was interesting I, I would agree I, I think uh, I think we're seeing the semi landslide that I was looking to see if it was gonna happen in Iowa and, and, and we're seeing it so it's interesting it's fun to watch Marisa it's like a big football game to me so yeah it, it's become sort of sport at least here yeah. in Iowa Maricel Del Valle on the end joins us now as well and um, Maricel gender in this race Joni Ernst seemed to have trouble with the woman's vote uh, still not sure if she's going to be able to pull it out, but your thoughts on that Senate race? My thoughts on Joni Ernst as a female, I mean, I'm, as a female, I'm very excited that she would be uh, potentially our first uh, female senator. Um, however, as a female, I don't like her politics. I don't like what she stands for. So, yeah, I, gender doesn't really play a, a role in it for me, though. It didn't seem like it was it was brought up very much um, in this. And Andor, I can ask you as a fellow female there on our panel, uh, gender didn't seem to come up in this race until a couple of days ago when Senator Harkin decided to <laughs> <laughs> refer to her cuteness. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, quite frankly, I thought it was just a, a harmless comment and I, it was kind of blown out of proportion. But um, the gender, I don't understand why it is brought up uh, the war on women. We hear that a lot coming from the Democratic side every time there's an election and I, I, I don't see that. I don't think that one party has more of a war on women or a war on blacks or a war on poverty or anything else. I, it, right now it's hard to discern the difference between either of the parties in Washington. It's now a, kind of an us against them mentality. Interesting. It really is interesting to get your perspective panel and we appreciate you being here. The reason these folks are in our studio tonight is to give you folks at home an idea of what the average voter is thinking about during this election and I think it's interesting to get that perspective as well. And we, we joke about it being a sport in Iowa but we are very informed. Our voters are very informed here. We have to be. Absolutely. That's what we do. We have a panel of voters sitting in the studio tonight that are giving us their perspectives on what they're seeing. It's a way to give you perspective as to what grassroots voters are saying. And I'd like to ask James Knox, what stands out to you at this point? I mean, any one of the races, I mean, I know you're all on your smartphones and you're all following the races around the country, but what's standing out to you right now, James? Well, uh, locally, I mean, the Senate race, according to the Secretary of State, is really catching up. And I think we're gonna really start to see the Republican um, uh, move forward as uh, the votes are counted. I know earlier today, uh, working various polls, um, I just saw a lot of people coming, uh, focus on voting to overcome the policies uh, of our current uh, administrator and uh, you know president and everything that that entails uh, on down through the other uh, you know Senate and so forth. You know, Rob, I know you're in uh, Johnson County. What have you seen in terms of uh, voter interest in the ground game? In the ground game, I've seen a lot of the Johnson County Democrats going door to door. I haven't seen the same foot campaign on the uh, side of the Republicans. That being said, 
it's no surprise that a lot of these races are extremely, co extremely close. So I'm interested to see how it all turns out. Yeah. Anne, interested to get your two cents at this point. Well, I was just looking on my smartphone, and I, it, it's amazing to me how many uh, states have may, maybe ended up with, a, say, a Republican governor, and a, uh, they're sending a Democrat to the Senate or the House. So I, I don't know that it's, uh, I think it's, a lot of people are voting uh, the candidate, and there is going to be a lot of splits um, in the alignment as far as you would think having a Republican, a strong Republican would kind of follow down, and in some cases that's not necessarily the case. Okay, thank you so much again to our Voice of the Voter panel for joining us with that unique perspective tonight that hopefully you at home will benefit from as well. Indeed, we are following a lot of close races as the numbers to continue to roll in tonight. Welcome back to special coverage of Vote 2014 here in CBS2. We have a Voice of the Voters panel with us in studio watching all the results come in. We had to cut them off and we went to hear from uh, Joni Ernst, but let's get back to Landis Wiley. And Landis, you had some thoughts on how Congress is going to move forward getting along with the president. Sure, I mean, I, I think the results tonight are interesting, probably not really surprising for, uh, for most people. Um, I think it puts a lot of onus, though, on Republicans now to decide what they're going to do moving forward. You know, they've got a choice of going in and maybe having an opportunity here to take some common sense legislative actions, uh, putting some things onto, onto the president's desk, and then really putting the ball in, in the administration's court on whether they want to take a Clintonian approach um, of working across the aisle or if they're going to, you know, in a way, make themselves vulnerable to, the, to flipping the argument of becoming the party of no. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this works out. Um, I think it's going to take uh, some, some common sense by Republicans to not look at this as too much of a mandate, so to speak, um, and also maybe an, a willingness on the part of an administration uh, to change course a bit and at least extend some olive branches. So. Marty, so you also had some thoughts on this. Um, I, I am agreeing with what Landa said uh, in terms of it, that is ideally what we'd all like to see, to see the the president and, and going more towards a, a bipartisan, which is what he did campaign for six six years ago. But um, my my concern as as a as a woman is to see that uh, a party that has consistently voted against, uh, for example, only two percent out of Republicans voted for an equal pay for women just recently, that kind of concern. A party, both parties are, are guilty of this, where they are now so toting the party line that I, I find it uh, refreshing to see some of our panel members still having specific issues that they vote on, but mostly I feel that we are now just voting on because on party lines because the parties are not feeling free enough to veer from where they um, where they where their voters really want them to go you know do you think Republicans are ready to listen to Democrats and vice versa panel you know um, I don't see the current administration uh, wanting to listen or, or okay. reach across the aisle sadly and I do think that it's a very strategic time uh, for the Republicans to set up the case for 2016, we need a president that's going to get stuff done. But really, truthfully, it needs to go beyond R or D matters. Okay, James, thanks. Rob, I know you're just chomping at the bit here. You got something to say. Uh, so yeah, uh, the races tonight uh, didn't go in the way that I personally would have chosen. But like you said earlier, we had some great discussion among us. We are people from all walks of life, all different persuasions. We had great conversation. Let's take that conversation outside this room and start a dialogue so we don't have to just be partisan people. We can do this. We're Iowans. That is something that unites us. Let's take that to Washington. Amen, Rob. Boy, I'm telling you, let's slam dunk, on that, slam dunk on that comment right hey, there. Hey, thank yeah. you so much, Voice of the Voters panel. Proud to have you in here with us. Thanks for your perspective. It is sincerely appreciated.